Over the weekend, a UN-backed panel on climate change issued a blunt warning. Time is running out to avoid the most severe consequences. The report was aimed at spurring action from government policymakers around the world. Here's a look at some of the key findings. The panel says global warming is unequivocal. It says changes observed since the 1950s are unprecedented. Right now, the report says human-made greenhouse gas emissions are at the highest levels in history. If those levels of emissions continue, humanity risks severe, pervasive, and irreversible impacts. Those impacts could be limited if global warming stays below a certain level. That, though, would require phasing out fossil fuels almost entirely by the year 2100, among other steps. Time to put the topic to our E-squared panel on energy and the environment. In Calgary, Ken Green, Senior Director of Natural Resource Studies at the Fraser Institute. And here in studio, Tom Rand, Managing Partner at Arcturn, Arcturn Fit Ventures, a venture capital fund that invests in clean technology. Uh, Tom, I'm going to start with you, but I want Ken to answer as well. This report seemed to me to be uh, not particularly new in the sense that there wasn't anything that where I said, oh my God, the climate is warming and we better do something about it. Uh, were you disappointed or is the language strong enough that you saw it as a good call to action? Yeah, well, it, it's certainly a good call to action. I mean, when you have that kind of apocalyptic language being used by scientists with well, 1,200 of them that need to reach consensus and sentence by sentence, this is vetted by their political masters. When the language gets pretty apocalyptic like that, it's very hard to ignore. Ken, what was your thought about it? Well, I think this is a similar report to what we've seen from the United Nations before. This is a summary report that looks back at the last major science volumes. Uh, if you actually dig into the technical reports, you can come up with substantiation for either being alarmed about climate change or being less alarmed about climate change. What I think is interesting is the policy ramifications of decarbonizing our energy system. That would have huge effects globally, economically, uh, on the poor, on Canada, uh, basically on everybody uh, if we try to go through with that prescription. Well, let's, so let's drill into that a bit, Ken. Uh, when you say decarbonizing, obviously this they're giving us a lot of time. 2100 is a long time away, uh, so it's not as though they're, they're saying 2020, which some people have said we need pretty serious emissions targets by then. Uh, is that not enough time to even, say, let emerging technologies take over? Well, when you think about the fact that, in fact, the report says we need to be most of the way there by 2050, not by 2100, uh, and the fact that we build power plants now that last 40, 50 years and more, uh, no, that's not a lot of time. Uh, in fact, we'd have to begin immediately with very rapid reductions, and that would cause very rapid economic consequences. Essentially, what they're calling for is Canada to simply walk away from its natural resources in the oil sands, in natural gas, and in coal uh, over the next 25 to 50 years, really, uh, that the job has to be done. Uh, and we have no technologies that would let us replace that energy uh, in any meaningful way with uh, non-carbon alternatives, uh, other than a vast build-out of nuclear power, which is unlikely to be, be uh, acceptable to the environmental movement. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's nonsense. Um, uh, clean energy is perfectly ready and capable of stepping up to the job. Um, Toronto's own Morgan Solar will be producing solar power at five cents a kilowatt hour in the oil-rich Mideast in 2015. Um, talk to Elon Musk about his uh, multi-gigawatt battery factory. <coughs> Look, objects in mirror are much closer than they seem. That's not just something you see in your car mirror. This is uh, true of clean tech. Um, so I would argue that the barriers to clean tech and competing against fossil fuels are not technological. They are now about access to capital, and it's about scale. It's not. Well, but, boosters, can, but, yeah. but boosters have been saying this every 10 years for the last 50 years. The electric car has been 10 years away for 100 years now. Wind and solar power are going to turn even and, ma and make profit any day now. It's, we've heard this now for 40 years. Well, look, I, look, I mean, this is the oldest orphan technology, <laughs> uh, infant technology in the world. Yeah, the difference is technology has advanced. So the difference between now and 15 years ago, it is an empirical statement of claim to say uh, uh, clean energy can beat fossil fuels at its own game. It's an empirical claim. It's no longer a projection into the future. And look, the price of clean energy is going in one direction, and that's down. Right. And the price of fossil fuels are going in one direction, and that's up. And carbon risk is going in one direction, and that's up. Have you looked at oil prices lately? Oil prices are declining. Natural gas prices have declined over time. Um, I mean, I don't see where fossil fuel prices are going up. There oh. is no, no peak in the, in the horizon. And the renewables are going down only because governments are pumping in massive amounts of subsidies. That's completely without untrue. Them, that's without look, them, look, those, look, the, no, those that, technologies are not that's deployed. That's simply not true. The tr every industry of any size has required training wheels to get off the ground. Uh, that includes nuclear, aerospace, automotive, uh, the internet. That all had strategic government support at its outset. Clean energy is no different. The, 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 what's happened now is the training wheels are ready to come off the bike. What's required... Take, then let's take them off. Let's take them off. And then oh, let's, okay, see, what's, let, let's, let's 
see what the market does. I'm absolutely, if we want to eliminate fossil fuel uh, subsidies, I'm fine with that, and then we'll be on an equal playing field. Absolutely, let's get the, rid the, of all the, the question, The question is not, can clean energy beat fossil fuels? It can and it will in the market. I'm not worried about the health of my companies. As a human being, I'm worried about whether we do this fast enough to mitigate climate disruption. So let's, well, let's talk about as, uh, as human beings who also happen to be Canadians, Ken. Uh, there's a couple of factors here that, that I worry about. When I hear people as brilliant as Ray Kurzweil saying that within 20 years, solar will power most of the world's energy almost for free, I say, if he's right, and he's been right about an awful lot of predictions over the last 40 years, if he's right, Canada needs a plan B. Uh, so let's, I, I would say, we don't even have to make it a conversation about climate change to say Canada needs to move beyond fossil fuels. Well, the, prob the problem with predictions is that uh, the world has a great track record with energy predictions of being uniformly wrong. Uh, virtually every energy transition in the past that has been predicted in terms of peaks, changes over from one source to another, have been wrong. Um, and there's no reason to believe that uh, Mr. Kurzweil is any more right than the other people who predicted energy revolutions. I remember testifying to Congress 10 or 15 years ago about cellulosic ethanol, which we were, I was promised by Vinod Kozla, a, a leading venture capitalist, was ready to, to, to come out on the market and beat the price of gasoline. So 10 look, years let, later, let's, let's, nothing. Let's let the market decide. Look, at the end of the day, um, push comes to shove, we have to get off fossil fuels. This is what the IPCC report is all about. Five or six degrees of warming is not something that our global economy survives. Right. Never Five mind or six degrees of warming is not credible. The higher well, end estimates of warming look, have been know, dismissed, if I including know, by the UN. If I want to know if cigarettes cause cancer, I don't go to my chain smoking uncle, I go to the Canadian Medical Association. And the equivalent of the Canadian Medical Association, the IPCC, has said loud and clear, backed up by the International Energy Agency, the National Academies of Science of every industrialized country, start I've from been, the I've premise, been, start from I've the been, premise that climate change is real and dangerous, or this conversation can't be interesting. I've been an expert reviewer for the IPCC. I've seen how that sausage is made. It is nowhere near as clean as going to your doctor and being diagnosed right. with an illness. And, as a matter of fact, it it's is more a mixed conservative. process of politics and science. Which makes it conservative. Which, right? makes, it, it not, which makes it activist. The International uh, Energy Agency, I think you would agree, are experts in their field. Uh, no tree huggers they. The International Energy Agency has confirmed we're on track for six degrees of warming. So again, it's not up to you or me to decide whether six is possible or not. The Inf International Energy Agency, the National Academies of Science, that's the equivalent of the doctor. So if we're not going to listen to the doctors, there's not much to talk so, about. So, but let me just, I want to just redirect this, Ken, because if we are, uh, as a country, we, you know, there's a few, a handful of countries in the world that need to look at fossil fuels and say, uh, we're very reliant on them economically if the world is moving away from them for one reason or another even if it's just driven by new technology that's cheaper and cleaner uh, we do we need a plan do we need a concerted government focused policy around this whether it's driven by climate change or not I'm almost agnostic on that uh, you know, I, I don't, I'm not a big believer in national energy plans, not surprisingly. Uh, I don't think that we have the, the knowledge to predict. What well, I think when we you do say national do, energy plan in Calgary, you're going to get something uh -huh. thrown at you. It's fight, fighting words, I know. What we need to ensure, though, is that our markets are functioning, our energy markets are functioning, competitive, and open to competition. I, I, I have actually no stake in exactly how we generate power in the future. What I care about is that we generate enough power for people at affordable prices in a reliable way that keeps the lights on, keeps the computer going, keeps the refrigerators working, on, keep, uh, working uh, and keeps the hospitals uh, lit up and powered and things like that. Well, every, everybody um, wants that. I think what we also want is a planet that isn't heading to five or six degrees of warming. At the end of the day, I, I agree, the market should be deciding this, but you can't have free pollution, right? You have to price carbon. It has a cost to it. It has a social cost. It can be measured. And if you want the market to function, then you have to price that externality. Right now, it's a market failure. So any fan of the market understands you have to price carbon and let the market sort it out. We'll see we're fossil fuels pricing, on the open we're, fields. we're currently pricing carbon in many, many ways, aside from having a carbon levy here in Alberta. Trivial, vehicle, trivial, vehicle, trivial economy, vehicle fuel economy standards are a price on carbon. Appliance efficiency standards are a price on carbon. And it's not enough. Construction efficiency and it's not standards enough. are a price on carbon. And it's carbon. not enough. At the end of the day, business as usual is taking us to five or six degrees of warming. That's unequivocal. So either we price carbon high enough that we leave fossil fuels in the ground or we won't solve this problem. Can, can Again, I just ask if, you, just if you look out the window, if you actually just look out the window and look at temperature trends, there is no suggestion we're on track for five and six degrees. <laughs> okay, of warming. We don't Even the United doctor, Nations has to. walked back Ken, that language. Let me just language. ask this question though, because the, what the IPCC is saying is they want to keep warming below two degrees. Is that not still alarming? Uh, uh, two way? degrees is in the rearview mirror in my, in my view. Don't forget okay. the IPCC is politicized in the sense that the statements of alarm have to be vetted by all their political masters. So it is a more conservative statement than something like the International Energy Agency or the Royal Academies of Science. So it's worse than it appears in the IPCC report. All right, we've got to leave it there. That's E-squared for this week. Thank you both for being here, Ken Green and Tom Rand. Thanks.